defend, escape, control, submit. Professor Hidong took us to the whiteboard and took us to school, you guys. I learned as much, if not more, than you guys did. But I told him, I said, Hidong, the world needs examples because dry erase markers on whiteboards can only take us so far into the chokehold. Or out of the chokehold in his case. Listen, so you've learned a lot and I'm still learning. Just talking about this, right? Just sharing this concept has very much helped me in my growth. And this is something that Eddie Gracie taught us this. But never broken down in this way. But looking back, everything that everything. my grandfather and my father, everybody who, all my instructors before, you know, up to date, have taught me things that helped really build me in this order of operations. And it's a headache to deal with you guys. He is rock solid. Defend, <laughs> escape, control, submit. We're gonna go deep into all of them in a four part series. Right now mm -hmm. it's just defend, dissect it on another level. Three parts, okay? Big position, small position, and deep position. Big position, what does that mean? That means that if I side control Hannah, for example, it's not uncommon for me to get to the side control. Now, the position is not a problem. What's a problem is that if I can win the first battle, and this is a battle, right now, he does not want this arm wrapped. He'd much rather have his arms inside, frame. he'd much rather have his elbow on the ground, even if it's outside here, he wants to have it under my arm. So my first battle, if I want to isolate this arm, is going to be very difficult. Why? Because Henner is so in tune and so aware and so, so good at keeping this arm out of my... Look at that. It's not even a possibility right now. And when the time comes, he goes back to the frame, back to defending. So big position, heavy head, heavy elbow, um, just heavy parts of your body is a very important concept to defending early on. Like I mentioned, big position counters. So would it be fair to say, Hedon, that defending against the big position is defending the first major milestone for you yes. towards that submission. And let's just remove the side mount by itself as one of those milestones. Mm -hmm. Because we'd like to avoid our guard getting past, but that's mm -hmm. it happens and we land here. So if we can get comfortable that they're here, but still avoid the first major accomplishment. Yes. Because I feel like when Hedon gets this, he is, in his mind, he's 20%, 30% there to a submission. Like, the, his excitement begins right now in terms yes. of what's really possible. And knowing that, I have to defend against this big position. Just the underhook is not a submission, but it's the beginning of the end, you guys. And defending against that is, you know, kind of part one of defend discussion. And the most important thing to, for you, the, how are you able to keep your elbow so nailed? Yes. Or your hand Our in grandfather a safe taught us place. this, yeah. What, what is it about Henner that allows him to keep me from winning this arm and catching this arm? It's yeah. this, it's the mindset, right? right? If you tell yourself that you have to escape, yeah. in, now I got ah. the arm. Okay, so when you're more worried about getting out from underneath somebody than you are stopping their progress, you're done. then you're helping them. It's crazy. So there's big, now small. So once I get the arm, assuming that he loses the big position battle, I hold, I, can't, I wrap the arm. Now, like he said, I'm 20%, I'm I had the arm lock 20%. And now I'm gonna wanna pull the arm across the body, bug his neck, potentially like go over for like a Kimura right here, maybe spin for a full arm lock. So what are the things that he's gonna do these are the small victories. Once that big accomplishment happened, the small things and the small battles, the hand fighting battles, the angle, the avoidance of heat on getting from that initial isolation of a limb mm -hmm. to the actual squeezing position of danger where the submission is imminent and the pressure is real. Yes. Anything that happens from that window to that window is small victories. And there's no doubt that all of us have spent so many, um, have had so many experiences in this small position yes. realm. So from here, what's so the So let's first? go back. Well, the urine, that's too nice of me already. Go back. Let's go back. <laughs> You're assuming, yeah, thank you. <laughs> it didn't start there, my man. It starts here. So the so, arm is wrapped. Yes. So at, right now, there, it feels very difficult to just make an escape right now on this arm. He's really, he don't only cares about holding it. So guess what? I can also only care about holding him. Oh my gosh. Now pull it across my body. No. Begin your submission. Mm -hmm. Look, you guys, just by me hugging and locking, I'm not getting out, but I'm definitely not getting progressed against, mm -hmm. right? So pull the arm across the way you want to. Mm -hmm. It starts to be weird. Yeah. So start to make the space or separation to allow you to pull the arm across. 
Boom. Mm -hmm. And then we go. So you can only do what you just did if you understand that, number one, I can't finish you while you're doing that. But number two, in my attempt to finish you, I'm going to give you what That's, I just gave you. Yes. So if there is no escape, stop trying to escape. But the thing is, it's hard to accept that there is no escape. It's hard yeah. to say that there is no escape. Yeah, it's the most efficient mindset on the planet. Yes, and the truth is, maybe there is an escape. Yeah. Maybe you could have done something else. Savagery. But you don't want to tap into that savagery unless you really need to. Life or death, you guys. I only have about eight bursts per roll, so I'm trying to save them. Okay, next. Let's go a little bit more <laughs> so into let's small. Go back, back, back. So let's say here, yeah. I, he the, gets the arm across. So he gets the arm across. So now it starts to be, okay, what's next right here? What's possible? Before he steps, go back. So even before he steps, if I can get a hold of Hidon's back leg and I can feed yeah. it to the quarter guard right now. This is another way of you holding and delaying. Now I mess up his ability to spin because he'll break his own knee if he spins around at this point. I don't want to do that. So this again, while he deals with that, then maybe there's a chance yeah. to swim my hand back inside as he's very annoying. figuring that out. Let's say I didn't get that. Another thing I want to avoid is this armpit. If he don't shoot his knee in my armpit, he controls the armpit. So go back. So while we're here, go to the armpit. I don't want him so that when he steps over my head, go a big step, big spin. Look, so I can frame out and yeah. sit my head out and go over. Mm -hmm. So the armpit battle is a small battle that you can win, which is avoid his foot from getting, his knee and his foot from getting into the armpit. Now, if I get your armpit, will you hold? Yeah. If I get his armpit and I go here, look, boom. There's a small victory. Look at the hand fighting. Anchor, ah. double lockdown, big active forearms, active wrists, and now he's pulling against his own Nothing. leg. Boom. And again, he never arrived to the position where pressure was certain and I was deeply trying to escape a da dangerous submission. He never got there because of these small victories, positions, and frustrations. And these all come from knowing exactly where he wants to land. So, you know, the best defense is a good offense. Understanding where he don't wants to go with this technique will help me greatly and has over my entire life learn what I need to do to frustrate each phase of his progress to what I know his end result was. So going. there's two ways that you can build extreme comfort in defending submissions. One can be by being on the receiving end mm -hmm. for a very long time, mm -hmm. which is very difficult. It's, it's very tiring, yes. it's very stressful. You went that route in many ways. I didn't have a choice. In many positions. I didn't have a choice. Another way is to become fascinated with the attack. Give the attack time start studying the attack and the more you study arm locks the better you will be at defending arm locks yeah let's go deep let's go deep yeah the truth is so let's say it lands say it gets past these small battles he wins the small battles and we get locked in the deep submission and sadly enough if someone gets caught in an arm lock this is almost the first question they ask how do i escape the fully locked submission mm -hmm. that's usually their first question when it should be the last question yeah they call you over and they're in the arm lock how do i get out of here what does this tell us there's no big, there's no small, there's just deep. There's which means they don't understand defense. Which means they don't understand jujitsu. So let's, let's get it. The arm gets wrapped. Get over here. Yeah, the arm is here. Everything is happening. Armpit gets lost. Everything happens. Every, let's say I land here. Yeah. A little better for me. Okay. I land here. Most people in this position right now, they don't want to accept this. Yes. And they're thinking, you know what? I got to get my arm out of here now. And the decision of how to do that is based on what they want to do, based on what they're allowed to do, based on your attack squeeze tendency. It should be. But very often it's not. Very yes. often, if you want to get out right now, start getting out right uh, now, boom. Mm, 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 yeah. Right? So basically, if he is more concerned about getting out than he is concerned about seeing and feeling how it is that I'm gonna go about getting his arm, mm. there's a greater chance that he gets submitted. Now, if he stays here, he holds. And now I, for example, pull. He was just pulling with heavy feet. So if there could be 10 people who catch my arm right here, and I escape 10 different ways against all 10 people because their energy, squeeze, focus, and concerns determine my opportunity, okay? Priorities determine opportunities. So whatever he's focused on, I'm not going to escape based on that, right? If he's focused on basically keeping his feet heavy and arching back, push off your feet. Yes, like that. I'm not going to try to sit up because his feet are too heavy. Instead, I'm going to whip my legs, pull my shoulders away so I can knock his feet out where he's not preventing that and then whip my elbow to the mat. Let's say instead though, his heels are super tight to my body. So now I can't do that, but I can whip him down and then come on up over here because he's so tense and his feet were so light because they were squeezing this way, but they were not heavy into the ground. Let's say they're heavy, they're squeezing, cross your legs. Let's say they're crossed, 
and they're squeezing at the same time. So now it's gonna be much more difficult to go any route. Bump down, uh, push the knee over, and drive over the top right there because his knees were not the focus, it was his feet that were the focus. Let's say that we, <laughs> we got the idea. We got the idea. Okay. But, but the point is, every one of those was, I, I had to be present enough, like he don't say, buy myself time by delaying progress, number one, hold on. And I had to be present enough to say, okay, what's his squeeze and attack method and priority? And then I go, wow, his feet are heavy, but they're not squeezy. So I'm gonna do this, boom, and slip my elbow to the mat. And that assessment can only take yeah. place if we're relaxing, calm, and present. Well, you're exercising patience, in right? And this scenario. level of presence in the deepest depths, or almost the deepest depths of an arm lock. Right. Right? This is not normal. Normal is when you're there, yeah. you need to get out now because if you don't, your arm's going to get extended. And that's why you get caught every time because of that rush of escape. So, summarize this for them, please. Yeah, we need to, we need to learn to accept our opponent's small victories. And we accept them and we stop them in their tracks. We don't allow progress. You say don't allow progress. Don't worry about backtracking. Don't cry over spilled milk. And like, ah, oh, my arm is stuck. I gotta get out of here right now. No, we're here. My arm is caught. I'm deep. I'm not gonna move. Now you're just thinking to yourselves, what are you gonna give me? And when they give it, then you just give everything on your side to get out. That's great. Everything starts with defense. We want to spend more time focusing on the big position and the small position counters. And the reason why is because they require the least amount of energy and the least amount of risk is involved in, in doing those. So practice early defense. Everything starts here. If your defense is good, everything else will fall in place. Yeah, so what it feels like to me is that for each of these battles, the big position, the small position, and the deep, there are really two types of action and, 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 and behavior and mindset that can happen. So example, come back here in the arm lock. Uh, sorry, initial setup. So he unhooks my arm. One is to stop progress. Yeah. Forget reversing progress and getting my arm out. One is just to prevent progress. Pull my arm across. Can't. Can't. So that's a one type. I'm not doing it. I'm just stopping everything, right? And then, hopefully, in that process, as he tries to make space or tries to sit up or put a frame across my neck, then I can get my hand back inside, frame, and bring my hands back in. And that'll allow me to reverse progress. The other type is to actually, uh, as he does something, reverse it completely. He steps over my head. As he steps, I'm, I'm reversing the arm lock and I'm escaping it. So understand that at every one of these phases within the defensive part of jujitsu, you can just delay any advance, forward advancement, is a huge victory, and I think that's what Hedon's pointing out, is that not a lot of people take satisfaction and fulfillment and priority uh, in the belief and understanding that stopping any advancement on their part is the biggest advancement on your part. And failure to connect with that and believe and absorb that will cause you to do things prematurely yeah. and ruin the situation the, for yourself. The fear is that in stopping, that you won't be able to stop them, and that oh. they'll continue to advance on you. Yeah. So you're stopping, but they're gonna keep advancing, and before you know it, you're in a deep lock submission. But even stopping, even holding somebody for five seconds does wonders. Because when you stop somebody for five seconds, and, and they have a plan, they're thinking, I got the arm, I'm going to finish it. When you stop them for five seconds, it takes them off their plan. They now have to create a little more space. They, they get a little they impatient. Keep moving. They want to keep going. Yeah, they don't and, like that. And then you're going to use that against them. And that's when the opening creates. You guys, originally when we shot this video, we shot one version already, and we gave examples of every position. So one was arm lock, big, small, deep. Triangle, big, small, deep. Back mount, big battle, small battle, deep battle. Too and much. You guys, we said, forget that. Let's reshoot. Let's do one example position, which is side mount, arm lock, threat, big battle, small battle, deep battle, and all the priorities and possibilities there. And then let them learn based on this and apply this concept to other positions of concern in the fight. You guys got to do this. And above everything else, what we want for you is that next time you get caught in a submission, trace it back as far as you can, you guys, to find out. Was your mindset wrong? And having the wrong mindset permitted them to accomplish their big position victory. And in their big position victory, was your 
flawed mindset of needing to escape right away rather than simply delaying progress, did that cause them or permit them the small position victory? And once the small position victory was in, were you so panicked and thought that, man, it's all, in, it's all over anyways, I might as well go crazy, which gave them the deep submission effectiveness. So you see, so you want to trace it back, you yeah. guys. You How can. far back? When I get caught in a triangle by Hidon, I don't go, Hidon, how should I get out of this triangle? Never once did I ask him or my grandfather that. If I get caught in a triangle, I go, wow, how far, let me meditate for a minute. Let me deconstruct how, this. How far back can I take the experience? And what's the earliest indicator of me deviating from the path of effectiveness and safe positioning and efficient movement that permitted eventually led to this failed or defeat? And I think that in that sense, you know, this is way bigger than even jujitsu. This is way bigger than jujitsu, you guys. If you're ever at a bus stop and you sit next to a 75-year-old man and he says, yeah, man, you know, I was married for, you know, 25 years and then, you know, it all fell apart. That's either a really sad conversation or it's a really good conversation. It's you a say, great hey, one. Mr. Old Man, thanks for sitting here and thanks for being here today. Let me ask you something if you don't mind. What was the earliest indicator from both of you guys? that you recognized when the deep submission of failed marriage, of failed marriage was imminent and was gonna happen. What was the earliest thing that you could tie back to to say, yeah, that caused this, which caused this, which caused this, which caused that. You wanna know that indicator so that right now in your young, healthy marriage. <laughs> beautiful. You guys beautiful. get the idea. So the thing is this, when you get caught in a deep, deep submission, don't ask about how to escape that position. How do you save the marriage at 75? Go, go deep the other way. Go deep. Go back two minutes, 10 minutes. Go back in the beginning of your jiu-jitsu journey. Go back to what your coach has been telling you for the last seven your years. Your framework is everything. Go back to that. Go really deep as to why you did what you did, which led to them doing what they did and you getting tapped out. I can already predict, I can already predict why 95% of the people watching this video we know why you got Habit submitted. Habit challenges and why you got submitted. Whether it's triangle, choke, back mount, this, that, arm lock, whatever it is. The reason is... Don't tell me. <laughs> the reason no, is your definition of victory in jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. We know. believe they know. that if you're not losing, you're winning. But you've been taught that if you don't win, you lose. You lose. That's not jiu-jitsu. 